Okay, I'll start recording. And again, <coughs> I'll be posting like the recordings on the Canvas side and you feel free to interrupt me at any moment, uh, either by the chat or just like you can unmute yourselves. What we were going to do today, uh, I think it, it would be cool like to finally show you like a three-dimensional universe, like that you sort of immerse yourself in a 3D universe, which is not like what you would like maybe like the first idea of you, what you would guess to what a, like a 3D universe would look like. So let me just like at least review, like do like a quick summary of what I said last time. Uh, for that, I need to share my iPad screen. Uh, did anyone get a chance to watch the Flatland movie? Just curious. Uh, it's a weird movie, but I think it can be in, like, it's interesting, a bit weird, but it could be worth uh, watching. Like if you, um, again, like it's optional, but I think you can, in, if you just have like a, an hour or so to just kill some time, uh, just watch it uh, and let me know what you thought. Uh, so again, <laughs> basically what we're trying to do, like like our goal is to try to do like some taxonomy or some sort of classification of what the possible universes are. And uh, like, it's useful to start with a, a slightly more easy problem, which uh, is sort of what we discussed in some detail last time, which is like, um, like how would like, uh, uh, like the one dimensional universes could look like. So let me just re remind you quickly of how the one dimensional universes are. And here, like again, like the fact that it's one dimensional uh, just means like, <coughs> just means that like in, on this universe, you can just sort of move like east, west, east, west, or if you prefer like north, south, north, south, but just one of the two like possibilities, like either you move like left, right, also you can say it or forward, backwards. Uh, so if you're someone on this universe, uh, If you're this dot on this universe, like again, because like you can e you cannot even like have strictly speaking a height, right? So imagine that re really this dot has no height. It's like a, just a tiny interval inside this bigger interval, right? And so this dot can only move like do like uh, left, right, left, right, right, left, right. Now, that um, the thing is like <clears throat> for us, like we have this godlike view of this universe, right? because we are sort of looking at it from, from the outside. And so it's not, it's almost like impossible not to think of this universe as being inside this paper, right? Uh, this piece of paper. But like what you should really think is like if someone for this universe, like they cannot see, like they cannot see like these directions. So someone on this universe is incapable of moving like this. But this is allowed, okay. <laughs> and what, like, one, like, two things that could happen.
is that you are like an explorer and then you get to this edge of the universe. So you get here after you're like trying to explore your universe and then you just get stuck. You cannot keep moving, right? So it gets stuck. So you sort of get like here, like a wall of sorts. Okay. And like, again, um, if you had moved on the other direction, you would like have the same issue that if you get to this other end, if you had walked to the left, if you get to the other end, you are stuck. It's the end of your journey. Um, on the other hand, uh, another, so this is like option one. And option two was that uh, you get to this uh, edge of the universe and like somehow you magically reappear here. So like you're moving this way. Once you get here, Right, and so it looks like uh, as if this universe has this like in cool teleportation property, where once you get to this edge, you uh, get like uh, reappear on this other edge, okay. And like what I was saying is that uh, so far so good. Like uh, hopefully this is like a reminder of what we were saying last time. And. And again, like um, this is like the difficulty for us to imagine. Uh, if you can, like, if you can only see uh, in this one direction, uh, you cannot really see what's going on, right? But I don't know if you see this cable, right? Like, imagine again, like you reappear, like you got to this edge and you reappear on this edge, and so like one other perspective that you can take of this universe uh, in option two is that really you are walking. Right. If you put like if you glue the two endpoints together, you're really walking on a circle, right? It's just it's just that uh, you're like the fact that you can only see one dimension, like maybe does not allow you to visualize a circle as this like curve uh, on the XY plane, but like really uh, this segment with this funny teleportation property is a circle. This is like uh, for us like how you should think of a circle. If that makes if that makes sense, so this is really and this explains why uh, you can sort of just return to the initial point without any, anything weird like i mean it, it looks weird from this perspective but if you could actually see it from the perspective of the figure on the xy plane there's no like weird phenomena going on it's just you're you're just returning to the same location that you started at is this making sense uh so far so good uh are there any questions about this up to this point Good, good. And again, uh, good. And uh, another thing that another thing that we will think about is that really, uh, when like when we talk about the shape of the universe, we're um, we're uh, not being too. I mean, we're we're allowing yourself some flexibility. So like. Meaning that, like, you sort of should think of this as being a as some sort of play dough, some sort of clay material, and so, like, when we talk about like trying to understand the shapes of the universe, we're not um, interested. It's okay for us if we need to bend the curve in order to figure out its shape. So here, when we're doing like this taxonomy, uh, in like from like the point of view of this of this taxonomy.
it is okay to to bend the curves meaning that like like if you had like this interval which looked like more like a some sort of like it looks like a piece of the sine function or like a combination of a straight segment with the sine function right like you just imagine that you sort of bended this curve uh, this segment a little bit okay oh sorry Or uh, if you bend this circle a little bit, and so you get something more like this. Right, like imagine you with your finger, you sort of push down the circle a little bit, and that, then you get here, you get to this, um, to this other shape. Uh, like the idea is that, uh, we sort when like we are sort of doing the this classification. I, like not that we're going to emphasize this a lot, but it's just for you to realize this that is going on. That like you're sort of putting these two universes in the same sort of family, and these other universes in the same family. So these two. These two belong to the same family. And these three uh, also like like here we have like one two three. Oh sorry. Uh, uh, oh that's a great question. Uh, let me answer it. Like just give me a second. Like just to finish writing this. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question that we actually will spend some time later talking more in detail about this. But, and uh, this is hard to visualize, but like at least for curves, like any like useful notion of saying that a curve is curved requires you to think of the curve sort of in like, say at least on the XY plane, because then you like, you would think of like the curvature as deviations, like it's what, like the curvature has to be related to what's preventing you from moving on a straight line somehow. But uh, the idea is like, if you, like this is again, hard to visualize, but imagine that you sort of deleted like the rest of the universe. Like really, it's not that here is void space. It's that literally, it is nothing. Like, you know, the void is something. Like even the void is something like, because that's space. You are imagining that there's nothing but this uh, one dimensional curve. And like in that case, there's not like some sort of experiment that you could do to figure out if you are curved or not. So this happens also for the circle. So uh, there's like an idea of like intrinsic curvature versus extrinsic curvature. And we will talk this more about um, later for when we talk about surfaces. But like, for example, if you see this donut, like there's a way, this is what Gauss realized there's like a way in which the you can think that this donut is curved on the on by the fact that it's like in this three dimensional space but gauss realized that there's a way to come like define like some sort of curvature of the donut that does not require you to think that the donut is somehow in this bigger dimensional space so like the short answer is like a one dimensional being cannot figure out that its universe is curved but already if you live on a surface, like there's something that you can do. Uh, and this is how Gauss, like, um, this is like how much of like the ideas between like of general relativity come from. Because in general relativity, like the idea is like the space and time can be curved, but the curvature that is 
refer to like in general relativity is like some sort of like intrinsic curvature. It's not a curvature that requires you to think of like the shape in some bigger uh, universe. So that is like you sort of see it bent. It's a little bit difficult. I mean, I don't know if I, uh, I answer your question, um, uh, but we will discuss this in more detail uh, eventually. Yeah, but like it's like again, it's uh, it's a um, <coughs> it, 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 it takes time. This was like one of the major results like that Gauss found, but. Uh, like the idea is like the philosophy that you have to have in mind is that you don't want to think of this like line as somehow living necessarily on the plane. Like it, it is a line in its own right, a curve in its own right. Uh, uh, well, well, um, and that's uh, right. If you're thinking of, like about, about this physically, uh, <laughs> like, like right, if you actually thought like of this um, of this curve like on the xy plane, you can think oh maybe it is bent by gravity because you know the mass is not distributed homogeneously, right? Uh, but if you thought more about this like uh, right, if you're thinking like of a, as a physical curve, if you think about this as like uh, 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 just like the curve itself, uh, you know because like. You can think maybe, oh, gravity is trying to pull you down, right? If you think when they tell you gravity is like, you know, something like this. When you draw gravity like as a vector pointing down, like, right, but like this pointing down direction is not, uh, is no longer fair game if you delete the rest of the universe from the picture, right? So if there's literally nothing, like, there's like nothing to move down to. Like uh, it's almost like an illusion that this curve is bent. That's what I'm trying to say. It's only if you think about it as this being drawn on the x y plane that you can sort of think that this is being bent. Is that making sense? And yeah, it could be like by some physical mechanism, like mass. If this were like an actual curve, but it's uh, it's hard. Like you know, everything like you already imagine. Like when you see an object. You sort of imagine that it's being surrounded by some some space, like what I'm asking you here as a mental exercise, is just to eliminate that like the, the space itself. Like the only space is this curve, and so like the notion of saying like for like if you're a, a a creature on this curve, you cannot really say that you are bent. Like uh, that's the pro like because. If, unless you can sort of compare it with like some higher dimensional space. That's the thing. Now let's play a game. If that's okay with you. Uh, this is a fun. I, I don't know if everyone got a chance to play with the links I sent you. Can everyone see the rat? Yeah. Good. Uh, yes, this is an important thing if you are a rat trying to get to this, uh, to the cheese in order to survive. Now here comes like here I haven't done nothing interesting so far. Boom 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 boom. Like you see like this teleportation property. Uh oh, bad luck. This did not work. Oh. Good, you survive <laughs> in this universe. Uh, I don't know if everyone's like, um, since what just happened. Um, so like the rat had this, uh, yes, the, 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 like the sound effects are pretty funny actually. 
uh, the rat has this property that if you are like a rat in this universe, like once you get this point, you sort of magically reappear here. And once you get to this point, you sort of you reappear here and so on, right? And so like the question is, if you are a rat, again, like a rat is two dimensional in this universe. The rat is stuck. It's not that the rat can take an Elon Musk spaceship and see the game being played from the outside. There's nothing else in this universe. There's no C direction. The rat is stuck here. So us with the godlike mentality, because we can actually see everything taking place in this universe, right? We can sort of have like a better geometric picture of, of where this game is being played in. And this is sort of, uh, something that we discussed last time, right? So like basically, uh, if you think about like what's happening here, uh, there's this edge, any point on this edge, right? It's sort of being like one way to think about this is like every point, every point on these two edges, like these two opposite edges are being like, have this teleportation feature. So like, if you thought about this as a piece of paper, like what you should do is really glue them. So here are like the two edges that I'm talking about. And you get this, this cylinder, you get this cylinder. But then you have to, uh, you have to play, and you also have to remember that there's this also, also funny teleportation property with the top edge and the bottom edge, right? So again, you have to imagine that you sort of, again, imagine this were like made of rubber or some material that's easier to stretch. And so you have to imagine that like you can sort of stretch this cylinder a little bit and then move it so that like you glue this circle with this other circle. And anyone remembers like what were you supposed to get? Like we talked about this like last time a little bit. Is it called a torus? It's called a torus. Uh, yes, the, the technical term is a donut, right? <laughs> now, uh, uh, by when I say donut, I really just mean like the, it's a, a donut you would not like to eat because it has no cream inside, right? It's just like the skin. It's like a low calorie donut. It's just the rat is playing the game, this game on, on, on the surface of the donut, if that makes sense. Like this is why, it, like you say that this donut is two dimensional. Is, is that okay? Is, is, that, is, so, is that making sense? So do you, do you mean to say like making uh, something a shape like a two dimensional maze into a 3D shape and back in like and you could make like the same donut into a 2D shape by projecting it onto um, like just a flat place and making it so that you can go from one edge to another? Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Like, uh... So do you mean to say that it's it's a way of just imagining that like making a 2D image into something 3D by making it continuous? Right, 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 right. Yes, like the thing is like, uh, like, right, like the way, if you thought about it from this way, I mean, from the perspective of the rat, like if the rat could sort of draw a map of its universe, right? Like the rat might say, oh my God, the, the position is like jumping, right? Like here it was like a 10, it was like here like on this edge, maybe at 10 meters and it, 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 it returns to zero meters, right? Uh, so it looks discontinuous in a way. But it's just because like the rat maybe it's not able to like sort of do this uh, gluing, like uh, it's not able to visualize how the edges are actually being, uh, the technical term is identified. So like you're sort of make, regarding these two edges as indistinguishable from each other. Uh, but the only way to do this accurately is by um, representing this as like this plane with these funny features as a, surface like which is curved in this 3d space right uh th that's, right. that's what's going on so like right like from this perspective you might say oh my god like you're sort of jumping discontinuously from one like one location to the other but like um once you think about it what's actually going on like you, there's no discontinuity because like really the game uh is actually happening on this donut it's just that the rat cannot represent it accurately because of its limited visual skills if that makes any sense. Yeah. Uh, right, 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 right. It's only uh, good, good, good question. Like in this case, like there's no, I mean, there's, uh, 
there's only the skin, so you cannot uh, you cannot go inside the skin or outside the skin, right? So you can only work walk on this surface. Uh, Right, you're like being like imagine that like I don't want to do this, but imagine I took like a marker and I'm drawing the rat on this like I'm using a marker to draw the rat here, so it's part of the it's part of the skin of the donut. It it doesn't even have like depth, like it's just like um it's a flat rat like in a sense like it's just like drawn on the surface of the donut. Is that okay? It has no thickness, correct? Yes. Yep, yep. So, for example, uh, and here, like, this is why, like, now we are, we come to something a little bit more crazy, which is the following. Let me show you the first interesting three dimensional universe that maybe you have seen in all your lives. So, this is an important moment, I think in your life. Do, uh, I mean, I think I didn't give you, I, I will send you this link. I, I may not have given you this link, but uh, that way it, it was, it was not my intention, but it was kept as a surprise then. Oh no, okay, it's, it's also in this game, but I mean, there are two uh, illustrations. So this is a fun one also. Everyone can see the, the box. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Now, again, imagine that this is sort of being played in some sort of aquarium. So this really is like on the inside of a box. A box has six sides, right? So you see here like uh, two are colored blue, two are colored green, and two are colored yellow, right? Oh my God, this is difficult. And so now you're the blue ball. Uh, you're walking on this blue ball. Boom, 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 boom. You keep moving down. Ta -da! And then you reappear on the top. Everyone saw it. Uh, so you have this teleportation property here. And likewise, uh, say so the 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 yellow edges are sort of like uh glued together and also when you move on this green side well you cannot move this because uh, there's no tube here but let's see boom like on this blue one you also reappear and Let's see, I, I still need to do the green one. Where can I do? Oh my God, this is. Uh... Oh, well, I already won. But, uh... <coughs> but the idea yeah, with the, I mean, let's see if I can play it again so that you see the, the green one. Um... Let me share this screen again. Uh... Yeah, and now the green one also has this teleportation property. So you have six edges, right? You had six sides and the in pairs are being glued together, right? Um, <coughs> and so again, you could think that like you're playing this game in this three dimensional world, right? But, uh, you know, like if you actually, now we're stuck right now because we're three dimensional creatures, right? And like, you have to imagine like, again, like making this aquarium out of rubber, somehow bending it so that the yellow sides are glued, then like bending it so that like green sides are blue uh, are glued and uh, like then the blue sides are glued. And you won't be able to do this in our space. So you won't be able to like know how this actually looks like. And this is called a, 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 tor a three-dimensional torus. Like, uh, this is like the adult version of the donut that I just showed you. Uh, is this making sense? 
Very much so. Is it, but like, you know, like it's sort of, uh, this is like our, uh, this is the, our, now we are the rats, right? Now we are doomed to not being able to picture this in its true shape, right? So we are stuck with this representation. We cannot really see how this looks like. But like the point is that somehow uh, for many properties, if you wanted to study many properties of this universe, you, you can sort of, uh, you know, you can sort of extract a lot of interesting co consequences just uh, just from this representation. You don't necessarily need to go to to actually see the object in its true form if you want to sound mystical. Is this making sense? Yes. Yeah, good, good. Let me give you a cosmological consequence of this. And I'll show you another video game soon. Uh, let me go back to the to the, the iPad. <coughs> Sorry, I need to share it. Good, good. Can everyone see the, 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 the iPad again? Yep. Oh, this is a great question. I'll tell you soon how to think of a sphere. We're getting close to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great uh, question, yeah. Uh, I'll try to tell you either today or next week what the spheres are like, or look from this point of view. Because like the Poincaré conjecture, I may have said it, said it last time, it's about the spheres. So at least by the end of next week, I promise you'll know a little bit of what the Poincaré conjecture is saying. But we're just like building up the, the drama. But yeah, like this is like a great point, yeah. Uh, So let me give you a cosmological application of this. Okay. So I don't know if you know, like <coughs> one of the things that like the theory of relativity says is that um, the, the speed of light is somehow the like nothing can move faster than the speed of light. So that's like an upper bound that like it's a maximum speed limit that like some sort of like uh, something moving in the universe can have, okay? So meaning that the um, speed of light does not propagate instantaneously, right? Uh, I don't know if you know the story, but like when Newton like discovered his gravitational law, uh, what happened like Imagine that this is the sun and this is the earth. So in Newton's theory of gravitation, like the thing that happened is like, imagine that you're somehow God and you remove the sun, you delete it from the universe. Then according to Newton's theory, like what would happen is that immediately the earth would stop experiencing the force of gravity that the sun was exerting on it, okay? So in Newton's theory, like gravitation was supposed to move instantaneously or propagate instantaneously. Uh, <laughs> like what happens in the theory of relativity is like, for example, the, the actually what happens is like the sun uh, creates like a field, like a gravitational field. And that field, like imagine like there are the sort of ripples in space and time that move. And so uh, I think the sun is like eight minutes eight light minutes away from earth or something like that, meaning that like uh, it takes light like eight minutes to travel from the earth to the sun. So if you're God and you eliminate the sun now, like the earth would experience the, the influence of gravity for eight more minutes until the sun went away. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yeah, so in a sense, like uh, whenever you interact uh, in the universe, all effects take time to propagate from one place to the other. 
So you're never like you're never interacting with an object instantaneously. Every interaction, like you're always interacting with the past version of an object, because like the the light that we're receiving right now on Earth took eight minutes to get here from the sun. So really, we're seeing like this sun eight minutes into the past, if if that makes any sense. And the same happens with sound, right? Like you know, like there's a, like a speed of sound. So like it's just like obviously for our distances, it almost takes no time for it to propagate, but where you're talking to someone, like really the sound that you're listening is not like the sound that you were like uh, producing at that moment. You're always like, in, like, so you are always like talking or interacting with the past versions of other things in the universe, if, if that makes sense. Okay. So why is this like interesting from our point of view? So let's see that, let, let's think, correct, yes, that's the point. <laughs> we see like, we always see the past. This is why like astronomers or cosmologists can get information about the Big Bang with the cosmic mag, uh, microwave very, very, uh, background or I don't know, uh, CMB, I think that's like the letter, like the initial letters for that. Uh, because like they see what it was produced like billions of billions of bil billions of years ago, and it just took time for it to travel to the Earth. Um, now, now here's an interesting thing. Actually, it's more complicated than that because what you see actually depends on like the shape that the universe is taking. So let's say that your universe is shaped like the like the torus, right? Or uh, again, remember torus is like a uh, donut. I mean, I'm going to misspell it, so let me just write it this way. I think this is not the correct way to write it, but I, I don't know. Uh, imagine that here, like you have planet Earth, and here you had like you have like a star that was uh, recently being born into existence. Okay. So let's say that like, if you were light, if you are light, like the light of the star, it says, let's say that it takes you eight minutes, takes you eight minutes to get from this, the, from the star to the earth. If you, if you're the light ray traveling in this way, right. But I don't know if you see what's going to happen. If you live on this torus, there's another possibility for light to travel, right? Because now like the start, like the light can travel this way and then magically reappear here, right? Let me use a different color maybe. And let's say that uh, if you go this way, it actually took, takes you like one minute to travel. Is this making sense what I'm trying to say? So here comes like the, here comes the magic. So what are you actually seeing from the earth point of view? When time is zero, right? <laughs> You're see, like the, like time zero is when the star recently formed, okay? So the star just formed. But on planet Earth, we don't see anything because at this time it's still like you need time for light to travel to where you are. So here on Earth, you don't see anything, right? Is that making sense? Because again, like it's, light does not travel in instantaneously. So even when you were formed as a star, it would take light some time to reach Earth. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. At time one, at time one, what happens? Now at time one, like light was able to move through this uh, red trajectory, right? So, sorry, time one. So at this time you see 
what like you see the star but you see the star being recently formed okay so from this point of view you see the beginning of this star right and the star now has lived for one minute But again, it's important like after one minute, you're seeing like the baby star. You're not seeing like the star one minute into its lifetime. And like light is trying to move also this way. So here comes the rate of light. Is that making sense? Like here comes this rate of light that also corresponded to the formation of the star, but it still hasn't had time to uh, move in this direction. So far so good? Yeah. Okay, and now here comes a cool thing. So, after eight minutes, right? What has happened? So after eight minutes, like the, the star, the light has had chance to get to the earth from this, through this trajectory. And so here earth from like from like if earth if you're pointing in like if you're facing that way earth sees like a newborn star like from now come in coming from here so earth sees a new star but it's also seeing another star from coming from this side because like now uh you know you see like uh you you still were receiving like light from this side and so here you see a star, uh, how many minutes old? Do you see this one? Anyone wants to take a guess? Perfect, beautiful, seven minutes old, right? So, because again, it still took you one minute to, to, <coughs> to travel to this point. So what's happening now after eight minutes is that somehow we think we're seeing two different, like if you're not careful, you might think you're actually looking at two stars, right? Because maybe you don't recognize like the picture as a, as being identical to the star that you have seen like a, a, after one minute. So like you could get to the conclusion that there are more stars that there are actually in the universe. Is that making sense? So like, it's like, this is like a weird, like this is like a cool idea. Like it's just saying that, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, right, right. Yes, I'm simplifying the model, uh, correct. Like uh, you, you, you'll see it like, um, right, right, right. Like if light moves like concentrically, it's a little bit more complicated, right? Like you have to, like you need to know how much it takes for, like you could see like coming from different points of view. Yes, I agree. Is that okay? It's just like we're doing like uh just i'm um, like the important point here is like to realize that you may not see just one copy of the same star you may see different copies of the same star at different ages in their in in its evolution because as you were pointing out like maybe the star also may move like this way and it reappears the light like you know like there could be a motion of the light that's like a little bit more complicated where like uh you're moving this way like like some sort of zigzag right uh is that making sense and so you could end up with tons of different versions of the same star, right? <clears throat> Is that okay? Uh, the same thing would happen. Uh, the same thing would happen if it's a sphere, but I suppose like, um, Yeah, yeah, like something similar would happen if it's a sphere. Like there could be locations of the sphere. Like uh, say if like in your sphere, somehow you thought of the star having formed at the North Pole and the earth being at the South Pole, then all the points, like the light will reach simultaneously to the South Pole, right? But if the earth was like at the equator and the star was at the North Pole, they might be distances that are, uh, that takes more time to travel if, if that's okay.
And so here is like a way to imagine you're a spaceship. Here's how your universe looks like. I mean, like, uh, again, this is like a 2D version of the torus. Um, again, this is like, uh, I'm not saying, like, this takes time to, to digest. So it's fine if, if not everything of what I'm saying makes sense at the moment. Uh, I'll send you the link. I believe I didn't send you the link for this one. <laughs> this one is also fun. Uh, can everyone uh, see it? And so here now, uh, this is being played on the on this three dimensional torus. And you see like, uh, the point is that like, for example, if you see to the roof, you see your like the back of your head and things like that. So this is some sort of illustration. Like the spaceship is like this colored triangle or pyramid. And this is like an illustration of how like, I mean, uh, again, like a not too complicated illustration of to give you a sense of how like the universe, if you were a spaceship of how the universe would look like if you're playing it on, if you're exploring it on this uh, sphere, sorry, on this torus, on this three dimensional torus, okay? So uh, again, I'll send you the link is, uh, there are like other spaces that you can play with uh, they would take a lot of time to explain each of them, but like, <laughs> they're sort of fun too. I mean, you're ex like you are experiencing for the first time maybe universes which are not just like uh, the usual box X Y Z thing that you think the universe is like. Uh, so, it's an important moment. So this is fine. Like you can spend some time thinking about this. Um, let me go back to to the iPad. Now there are also fun things that can happen already. Uh, and this is like one of the reading assignments that I mentioned. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to think about it, but let's think about this for a second. So let's think of like the cylinder. Just the cylinder. Again, like the cylinder can think be thought of as um, You had this square or rectangle, but instead of like gluing the four sides, which is what we have been done, doing so far, we only glue two of them, right? So here's a way to think of a cylinder. Here's a belt. Here's the, uh, can everyone see the Explorer? Yeah. Yeah, good. And like, it's a big one, like it's a big belt, but like this is, I just like closed it up. So here you have like your cylinder. <laughs> I mean, so that like, this is like clear. I'm doing like a clone of the Explorer. So like, imagine this is the starting point of the Explorer and I'm just, just going to move around my space. And again, I'm always moving forward when I'm the explorer. You see, you like you, you're just keep moving. Nothing weird is happening.
and you get here and beautiful both are like you and your if you imagine that you just drew a, a drawing of yourself you see that both of you once you return you point in the same direction as uh your nose is pointing in the same direction that you left with is that making sense yeah <laughs> now if you have seen this i'll send you some youtube videos so like here i just close the belt in the naive way imagine that closing now the belt i'll do a twist so boom and now let's see what happens I think both are pointing in the same direction. You're the explorer. You keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. I still haven't changed anything. I'm still moving forward. Oh my God, what happened now? Well, how are they pointing? <laughs> They're pointing in the opposite, like the noses are pointing in the opposite way, right? <laughs> Is that clear? Yeah, so I, I have a question then. Yeah. So if, Two people are on the opposite edges of the universe, right? Or like whatever universe they're in. Would that also mean that they're the farthest and closest that they can be? Well, uh, correct. Like uh, if you think about it, like from this Taurus perspective, if you live like on a Taurus, right? If the universe is like this donut, right? There's like uh, a direction which would be the closest, like the, right? Like you could take a path that would be like the least amount of time and you could take the opposite path and that would be the longest amount of time, yeah. Uh, but it depends, like, I mean, it depends like, when you say opposite edges, right? That requires you that to have this like weird teleportation property, right? If you cannot teleport through one of the edges, then you're just like at the longest, you know, uh, distance from each other. Well, here you can say that you're moving like at constant speed, you, uh, In this case, like there's some um, something called a geodesic, which I'll tell you maybe later. But a geodesic is like moving at a constant speed. So like uh, even if it looks as if it accelerated from the perspective from the outside, you can sort of still move at constant speed. Like for example, if you move from the North Pole to the equator through like um, longitude, you know, like the meridian, Greenwich meridian. You can move through that one in a way that you would say, oh, I am not changing my speed. Although uh, uh, the thing is like, there's other like, uh, like you're not accelerating in a sense from the perspective of the sphere. You would be accelerating if you saw it from the outside, but not from the inside. Oh, uh, <coughs> It isn't like, uh, uh, I think it depends on how you do it. Like there's a way, like, by the way, like this, like maybe before answering that, no, no, that makes sense. I'm just, I have to check what I'm going to say so that it's not wrong. Like this, by the way, is called the Mobius strip. Maybe some of you have heard that before. And like what just happened is that like, if your universe were like a Mobius strip, like, you know, once you return to the original point, you sort of change it, change your handedness. Like, you can think that this one was like left, right handed. And when it returns, it, 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 it um, gets back as a left handed creature. Uh, so there are universes where like, you cannot like sort of talk in a co coherent way of being right handed or left handed. But like the point is that that depends on like the properties of the space that you live in. Uh, now, 
there's a climb bottle, there's a thing called the climb bottle, which is constructed very similarly to the Mobius strip. And I'll check for next time. I don't think the climb bottle has, I, I mean, along the vertical thing, I think it depends on how you do it. Um, you can get a climb bottle if you glue two Mobius strips, but I think that's different from, from like the thing that you said, like of just teleport vertically. And so I think if you just teleport vertically here uh, and like no handedness changes, but I won't double check that because uh, it can be like, you know, I don't want to say something wrong. Uh, the stores, you're saying that the, um, that the sphere is infinite? Here's a way to finally, at uh, people's request, here's a way to think of, uh, of the sphere, I think. Let's play with clay. Yeah, 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 you can go around it and stay, um, right, you can, yes, you can do that on the earth, yes. You see, this is this is sort of like a disc, right? Everyone agrees that this is more or less like a disc. Again, imagine that I'm making it very, very thin. Like you should not think that it's like um, there's no thickness. Like it's an illusion. Like it's just like the. Here's another disc, right? Everyone sees that. So we have two discs. I mean, this one looks a little bit uglier than the other, uh, but it is what it is. <coughs> so how can you think of the sphere, finally, for uh, the audience request? Imagine that you had like these two flat disks. You have these copies of flat disks, right? And if you are an explorer here, uh, again, imagine like uh, you push it a, a little bit so that it looks more like a, a bowl, right? I'm pushing, like I'm deforming the, the disc so that it doesn't look flat anymore. So it's like the part of an umbrella, right? Everyone sees this, like it has like, Think of this like some sort of like the Northern Hemisphere. And like you also deform this one.
so that it looks like the southern hemisphere. So this is the southern hemisphere. This is the northern hemisphere. Each one has its own equator. And imagine that I put glue on the equators and I just glue them together. And imagine that I do this nicely. Anyone see what, sees what we're getting? Yeah, you're getting the sphere, right? You can think of the sphere as a north hemisphere with the southern hemisphere like glued along the equ equator. So what I'm saying is that Think of this as, really think of this as being more like this, like the bottom. Think of this as being like the top. <laughs> and then the sphere, so this is like the Southern hemisphere, this is the northern hemisphere, and then you glue the two hemispheres along the equator. So imagine that you move one of them, so that you put them here. meaning that you're going to do something like this. Is that making sense? And that's how you get the sphere. Is that okay with everyone? So you can think of a sphere like you can like <clears throat> if you think of the spaceship game, like a spaceship game on a sphere is being like again, if you cannot really visualize it as being curved in three dimensional space, you can think of the sphere as being played like a game on the sphere is really being played on two discs. But it's just that once you get to the edges of the equator, you reappear on the other edge. So the edge goes away because you just keep moving uh, along the other disk. Is that making sense? Uh, so I don't know. Um, I, I think someone had asked something about this here. I, I could try to answer it again if I didn't do it okay last time. Okay. <laughs> and maybe um, just to wrap this up and I'll, we can continue next week. Like the higher version of the sphere and this is what the Poincaré conjecture is about. And this may not be obvious. I'll do explain, the, I will explain this better next time. Like the analog of the, uh, like the, the adult version of the sphere is the following. You take two balls with their interior. So now they're like oranges. You're, you're, it's not just the skin.
and now uh, the game is now being played. If you're a spaceship, now you can go to on the inside of the ball. But once you reach the sphere, like the skin, you magically teleport to the other skin. So once you cross one of the skins, So you have to imagine that you have like two so soccer uh, balls <coughs> and you sort of glue them so that every point, like the North Pole gets glued to the North Pole, the South Pole gets glued to the South Pole, the equator gets glued to the equator, everything. It's not something that you, again, can visualize very cl clearly. It requires another dimension if you actually want to see it in its full glory. But that's basically the idea behind uh, I'll say this again, like next time, but just to give you like a, the gist of it, like the, the like the analog of the sphere, is is something like this. Is that okay? Again, this I said it a little bit too quick, but so it's like a video game where it's like the spaceship once you get to the skin appears on the other skin, and that's like, and the Poincaré conjecture is about the properties of this universe. It's like a three-dimensional universe, so it's like similar to the one that was like the aqu aquarium, but it's not. It, it's not the same. It has different properties as the aquarium one. So what I'm saying is that here it's just like you took two balls with its interior with the meat. Uh, Yes, correct, yeah. Good. I believe like maybe in these uh, apps that I, I, I'll send you the apps. I think you can play the game on a sphere as well, but. So yeah, I just saying like you take two balls with its interior and you have to imagine that you're sort of gluing them along their skins but all the points get glued simultaneously. That's what you cannot do. Like it's not difficult to glue pieces of the spheres, but if you have to glue all of them at the same time, that's what you cannot do. But that's what's happening here. <laughs> Is that okay? So again, let me know. I think this is a good place to end. I'll repeat part of what I just said next time. You should also let me know if we're moving too fast or too quickly, like too fast or too slow, like whatever, like, uh, because again, like the idea is like, uh, we don't really have like, uh, it's okay to spend more time just talking about something specific if people are interested in that. So is, is that okay with everyone so far so good? Uh, well, yeah, let's finish for today here. <coughs> Hope you enjoyed the rest of the week. So I'll see you uh, next Wednesday. I'll, I'll create a, another reading assignment with just some suggestions. But now um, the book, it, like if you keep reading the book, I think you will find it like uh, it's getting a little bit more interesting. And so I will try to explain some of the things the book is saying so that you understand the terminology, terminology it's using. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I may uh, I may try to say something about Richie Flow. Like that's like I, I, in the end, like how the proof works, like of this point carry conjecture. Uh, but I'll try. I have to think a little bit carefully, like how to explain it. Uh, but that would be like near the end. Uh, yeah, that uh, that would be interesting to say. But yeah, I'll try to 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 explain that eventually near like one or less or less class or like the last two classes. Have a great one. You too. Bye bye.
see you all then. Bye-bye.